What's up guys, Dr. Gooden here with the final installment in my mini series on how to program for resistance training. And this part is dealing with rest periods and volume. Now, if you missed any of the previous videos, you can find them all linked for you down in the description below. Or if you watch to the end of this video, you'll find a link to a playlist containing all of them or other videos from the university class that I teach, Practice for Strength Training and Conditioning. But I'll stop talking now and let's get right into the lecture. Now, this is part six. Um, it's really part six and seven for program design for resistance training, uh, volume and rest periods. <clears throat> All right, so some more uh, key terms uh, just to review that we just talked about. Remember that volume is the amount of weight lifted in a tra training session. A set is a group of repetitions performed sequentially without rest. Repetition volume is the total number of repetitions performed during a workout. And volume load is the total number of sets multiplied by the number of repetitions per set multiplied by the weight lifted. So if you lifted three sets of 10 on the back squat at say 120 kilograms, then your volume load would be, oh, I just made that hard by making it 120. Um, so that's gonna be 30 times 120. And if you're good at math, then whatever that comes out to, oh, I don't know, three, six, Zero, zero. Yeah, 3,600 kilograms would be your volume load for that workout, if that's all you did. Of course, if you did more than that, then you would add the other lifts in as well. All right, so the first thing to get right out of the way is multiple versus single sets. This is kind of an old argument that I think most people know that multiple sets is better than a single set now, but uh, we still, it's still important to make the case for it. Um, single set training may be appropriate say maybe, for untrained individuals or during the first several months of training. Um, I mean, I don't even think several months, maybe just a couple months. Now, the first set, most of the gains that you get come from the first set of training, as crazy as that sounds. So imagine go to the gym and just doing one set of everything, and you'll get okay gains. And if you're training for fitness, like that's going to be totally fine. But we want our athletes to be able to optimize their gains. Things you get from doing multiple sets are achieving higher volumes, <clears throat> promoting further gains in strength, and especially for our intermediate and advanced lifters, these athletes have uh, greater adaptive resistance. And so they, they can no longer uh, continue adapting to just a single set. Furthermore, <clears throat> you can increase your work capacity. You can increase the amount of time that you get to practice the movement. So you get better skill acquisition, better movement patterns. Excuse me. So multiple sets in the vast majority of cases will be better than a single set. Um, training status will influence the amount of volume that you can use as well. So it's an appropriate, it is appropriate for an athlete to perform only a couple sets as a beginner, but then as he or she becomes more and more trained to add sets on sets on sets. And no joke, I've met athletes who in their, uh, you know, in their volume phases of training, when they are trying to gain muscle, they come in in the morning and they do back squats, uh, straight leg deadlifts <clears throat> and clean poles or something like that, right? Three super intense, hard lower body lifts for five sets of 10. And then they come back to the gym in the evening and they do the same exact thing for five sets of 10. Just crazy amount of volume, really hard volume on the lower body in order to grow because they have, they're you know near maxing out their genetic potential. And without drugs or without anabolic steroids, uh, the only thing that you can improve uh, aside from your diet, which is super important, but it's just continuing to up that volume and really overloading in an appropriate way. Now, more volume is not always the answer, but um, it often is the answer. This table looks familiar to what we saw in the uh, load and repetitions part of the lecture, but this is looking at sets for strength, power hypertrophy, and muscular endurance. Now, this is, of course, a guideline, but notice that as you go from strength down to muscular endurance, the sets become fewer. And that's just because you're doing more reps per set. So it's gonna be really tough to do more than two or three sets with much greater than 12 repetitions if you're really going to, you know, near to failure on those sets. But of course, this is just a guide. I personally, and I've seen many athletes do this and have been prescribed things like 10 sets of three, where we're just really maximizing power and explosiveness and we get decent rest. So uh, as you go, yes, you become more tired, but you get enough rest to still be explosive on that 10 set. Or even for strength, something like eight sets of two, or um, I don't know, you know, four sets of two, and then uh, three sets of one or something like that. There's, there's a lot of different ways you can tweak this, but the main thing to get away from this table is that if you're doing fewer reps, then you can usually get away with more sets. So fewer reps per set, 
uh, allows you to get away with more sets. And increasing the number of sets is what can allow you to increase the volume of strength training instead of adding reps. Because if, if you add reps, then pretty soon you're just training hypertrophy or muscular endurance and not strength. So if you want to add volume during a strength or power phase, add sets instead of reps. Okay, so rest periods. Step seven for programming is rest periods. And, and this is the time dedicated to recovery between sets and exercises. Um, the length of the rest period between sets and exercises is highly dependent on the goal of training, the relative load, and the athlete's training status. So when you're training for strength and power using maximal or near maximal loads, uh, you need longer rest periods. Uh, the guidelines range from two to five minutes. So if you're doing, you know, a single or a double, right, one or just one or two reps in a set, and especially if it's a power movement, you could probably get away with two minutes. But let's say you're doing a heavy, heavy set of five on the back squat, then you're for sure going to want to take closer to three to five minutes on that for the recovery. So it depends on how long the set lasts, how near to failure it is, how much muscle mass it recruits, and how hard you're straining. This is a huge mistake I see a lot of people make when they first start training or prescribing training or coaching um, is that they think rest periods are useless and they want to see their athletes up and moving. But no, in reality, you need those athletes to be resting, uh, regenerating ATP, allowing their aerobic system to replenish the creatine phosphate system. They need to recover so that they can give a good effort again. You don't want to keep your heart rate, the heart rate's high for your athletes when you're strength and power training um, or even hypertrophy training between sets. You don't want to keep uh, heart rate high. Save that stuff for circuit training or you know your weekend boot camp class. But if you're training athletes, you really need them to recover between sets. For hypertrophy, you could go either way. Uh, short to moderate rest periods. It says they're required. They're not. They're not really requ required. We do know that short rest periods can increase the hypertrophic uh, response to training. So 30 seconds to one and a half minutes. But if you're doing more in that like six to 10 range and you're going heavy and it's for large multi-joint movements, then you still need that same, you know, three to five minutes of rest. So it kind of depends on your goal. If you're training more bodybuilder style, then shorter rests. If you're training more powerlifting and, and uh, strength and power style, but you're in a hypertrophy phase, then you're gonna need some longer rest. And then for muscular endurance, very short rest periods as low as 30 seconds. I, again, I don't like that it says are required. I would just X that out you can use rest periods of 30 seconds or less, but let's say you're doing a giant set of 30 and you're going near failure and you're not gonna be able to go again in 30 seconds. You'll be able to get like two reps after that. So <laughs> resting longer, I think would, would give you more time to recover and get another quality set in if you're really doing multiple sets of muscular endurance. Now you could do 30 seconds, you could do, you know, stop uh, well shy of failure, then rest for 30 seconds and then go again in kind of a myo rep or, or in order to maximize your, your effective reps. Myo reps is a strategy for doing that. But I don't think it's required in either hypertrophy or muscular endurance to go uh, to shorten the rest. You can shorten the rest, but it's not required.